This year I took extreme ownership over every detail and mistake on uh, of the roofing company I was starting. But instead of inspiring my employees, they just got entitled. Because of the because of this, the business almost ran into the ground. In addition, I got so worn down that my resolve almost collapsed. In your estimation, what did I do wrong? So, this is an example. I don't see this all the time, but I do see it sometimes. And what we have here is, you know, clearly, guy steps up and says, you know what, I'm going to take ownership. I'm going to take extreme ownership, which is what I'm always encouraging people to do. Leif and I wrote the book. We sure. called the book Extreme Ownership because that is the fundamental principle that we see as the common trait that makes people successful when they're taking ownership instead of blaming other people. So that's what this guy did with the roofing company. Hey, I'm going to take ownership of all the mistakes. Mm. Now, the problem there is with the, the, the concept of extreme ownership, it means taking ownership of the mistakes, taking ownership of the problems, but it doesn't stop there. That is simply where you start because the real true Ownership that you need to take is you need to take extreme ownership of the solutions of Implementing the solutions of creating and implementing the solutions. That's what you need to take ownership of so in a situation like this Like for instance, oh, I took ownership of everything. So my team became entitled Mm. Now now first of all in in that statement in its own right if I say, hey, we failed because my team became entitled, what did I just do? <laughs> blame them. I blame them yeah. for becoming entitled. Dang. Why did yeah. they become entitled? I allowed them to. Mm. What am I going to do to solve that? I either have to change the way I'm treating them. Maybe there's a couple cancers in there that have that attitude, and I need to fire those people or replace them or get them retrained or put some ownership on them so that they realize, oh, okay, Oh, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna lose my job if we're we're gonna fail this mission, or the company's going out of business if I don't do this right. So you gotta. That's the mistake there. What do I? So you've identified the problem. You've taken ownership of it. Hey, we we hey, we got to make sure we get our jobs done on time. Okay, boss. Well, you didn't order the gear in time, and you didn't do this, and now we're behind. So it's not our fault. And by the way, pay me. If that's the attitude your employees have, you got a problem as a leader. So what is the problem? How do you fix that problem? Um. The, the the thing is about ownership is taking ownership of the problem doesn't fix the problem, mm. right? It doesn't fix the problem. You still have to come up with the solution. So that's what it is. When we talk about extreme ownership, we're definitely not just talking about owning the problems, but like I said, owning the solutions and owning the implementation and actually carry to its to its furthest stretch, to, to, to its furthest outcome. That's where you have to take extreme ownership of, mm-hmm. of, and this is the most important part, and obviously I need to make this clear enough because this should be something that everyone fundamentally understands when they talk about extreme ownership. The, the most important part for you to own as a leader is the outcome, is the end state. If you are not meeting your end state, that's what you have to take ownership of, that's what you have to make happen. Mm. So that's it. You know, when you're when your company's not doing the right thing, yeah, you got to take ownership of the mistakes that happen. You got you got employees that are acting wrong. Yeah, hey, it's my fault that they're acting wrong. You got deadlines that you're missing. Yes, it's my fault that we missed the deadlines. Now you got to go back and ask yourself the question, how do I make the deadlines? How do I fix those employees? You got to solve those problems that are out there. Otherwise, extreme ownership doesn't do anything for you. And we've talked about this before as well. And that is that it's taking ownership of things is not a it's not a a shelter right. it's not it doesn't provide shelter yeah. it doesn't it and some people think it does they go hey you know what hey we missed a we missed uh we we failed on our mission it's my fault <laughs> okay so you know let's move on no 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 actually no we don't move on you failed in your mission how are you going to fix it yeah Extreme ownership does not does not give you any mercy whatsoever. That's what's hard about it. And by the way, the thing that the thing that extreme ownership that makes it hard is because the the previous question it attacks your ego. Because when you say, "Hey guys, this is my fault," you're not just saying, "Hey guys, this is my fault. Let's move on." You're saying, "This is truly my fault. Yeah. We failed because of me." 
And these yeah. are the things we're going to do to fix it. And I'm going to own it until we get it done. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. that It kind of makes sense. Like, it is one of those all or nothing things, you know, where extremo, you can, it's, it's just funny how you put it, you know, where you're like, I did my extreme ownership. The rest yep. is up to you guys yep. kind of thing. You can't really do that. And this question is, is, is a really good question. And I appreciate it because you can see the guy um, that asked it. He clearly is motivated, wants to do well, right. but he, he, I, again, my fault for not explaining this well enough. He thought that just taking ownership would solve the problem. No, yeah. you have to take ownership and solve the problem. I, matter of fact, the, the taking ownership part is the initial part that lets the rest of it happen. And and that's why we emphasize it so much because most people, they just don't take ownership. They're not even close. Yeah. The, this guy, he's close. He's taken ownership. Now he's got to realize, okay, I took ownership. I realize that it's my fault. And again, it's not just him saying, uh, uh, well, it's, it's my company, so it's my fault. And so I, I hope this works out. No, I don't hope anything. You yeah. fix it. You make it happen. And I again, I appreciate this question because I could see in his earnest asking of the question, like he's like, man, what, yeah, what, what did, did I, I do wrong? wrong? Yeah. What did I do wrong? Here's what you did wrong. You know, you, you made the first step, which is the hardest step. That's the positive here. Yeah. One of the most positive things about this guy is he's made the hardest step, which is, okay, this is my fault. The follow on is what he missed. Now, how do I fix it? What do I do to implement it? You got lackadaisical entitled employees. That is your fault. So how do you fix them? Because if you're lackadaisical and entitled around me, that means I'm doing something wrong. That means you don't understand the mission. You don't understand why we're doing what we're doing. You don't understand why it's important to meet the deadline on this roof so we can move on to another one so that we can collect money to pay for our next one. There's all kinds of reasons that you could tell people why these things are important. Mm -hmm. And if you have people that you they know exactly why they're doing what they're doing and they still aren't getting in the game, you need to find some more people to come and work for you. Yeah. Some different people. Some people with better attitudes and bring them on board with the right attitude. You have this... Um even to add to why this is such a good question is this is exactly what people are scared of with the extreme ownership. It's like, dang, if I take extreme ownership over everything, they're going to take advantage or they're going to, you know, be entitled or whatever that I think, I mean, even thinking about it, that's what I'd be afraid of. That's yeah. what I am afraid of, you know? And, and I will tell you, having done this my whole career, when you take ownership of things, People don't there. There's a small chance. There's a couple knuckleheads like these the idiots that this guy has working for him that are entitled mm -hmm. now I shouldn't say that because He may have provided the environment right, to become right. like he might have been the easy button and every time they say hey boss I can't fin I, hey, hey boss. I can't come in late today. Can you finish up that roof by yourself? <laughs> and he's like hey, you know what I'm gonna take ownership of this right he goes okay I'm gonna take ownership. Don't worry about it. I got it now he does that four days in a row. He's worked 16 hour days. He's starting to get broken mentally and physically. You ever right. done roofing before? Yeah. Have you ever done any roofing? Yeah. yeah. That's hard yeah. work, yeah. especially in the summertime when the blazing sun, you yeah. 14, 16 hour a day. I had to do, I pulled a chimney off my a little chimney off my roof one time. And I thought I was going to be able to just patch the roof. No, I had to strip like a third of my roof on my house. And then I'm up there. We got rainstorms coming. I'm up there. Okay, I got to roof this whole thing in the next, what is it, 18 hours? Get some. Yeah. So roofing is hard work. Yes, sir. And if if you don't take the, if you don't, if you don't get these employees in the right mindset, if they're not part of the team, if they're not on board, how are you going to fix that? If you And what I was going to say is if you become the easy button all the time, then that allows them. It fosters the attitude of, hey, you know what? Uh, this is on Jocko. He's the one that he's still got to pay me. Yeah. Like, no, actually, here, let me tell you how it really works. You know how I pay you regardless of what you do? Well, eventually I don't pay you anything because you don't work here and I don't have a business anymore. So if that's where you're at, I don't want you here. And I will do this myself, and I'll, I'll schedule my jobs appropriately so I can do it all myself. If you want to get in the game and be part of this team, which you should, then this is what I need from you. Here's the expectations. This is why. Mm -hmm. Because next year, this year, we did 14 roofs. Next year, I want to do double that. And that means I'm going to get you a crew that's going to work for you, and you're going to make bump your pay up a little bit. I'm going to get you moving along and get you promoted. Maybe sometime you'll have two or three teams working for you. Do you want to do that, or do you want to continue being the guy that's hauling shingles all day? Are you in the game with me or not? Are you part of this gig? See, so you got to get in their heads. you got to get them out of that mindset 
and into the right mindset so that you can dominate. Yeah, I feel like that extreme ownership kind of provides that too, you know, where if, like how you've always said, if you're like blaming them, overtly blaming them, they're like, oh, this is going on on my team. They mm-hmm. have that feeling. But if they're like, if he's taking the responsibility, it's like, oh, dang, this guy's kind of on my team. Yeah, I do want to do all that Classic, for you. classic, exa- you're right. Classic example. If I approach you and I'm like, Echo, dude, you're just entitled. <laughs> yeah, you're entitled. Yeah, yeah. You don't have a good attitude. What attitude do you have now? Yeah. What what attitude do you have now? Now you're like, oh, what are you talking about? I'm entitled. Yeah. What are you saying? I'm entitled. Yep. Yeah, you're damn right. I'm entitled because look at what I've been doing. I've been no. Whereas if I if I take a different approach with you and say, man, look, I think you got a lot of potential. You know, I think you got a lot. Of, no, you got a lot of things going on at home, and I know you got that girlfriend, and I know you're doing this and that. But you know what? I think you got some potential here. Let me show you what it's going to lead. You know, mm-hmm. I know you don't want to be carrying shingles for the rest of your life and on your knees smacking nails, right? But maybe you could be running a crew. And this is how I want to grow. Do you kind of want to get in the game with me? Because yes. I think you might. You see what I'm saying? That's all it takes. <laughs> you understand me. Yes. Yeah. Huh, good question. Thanks, and good luck with that company. 